Hello there, I'm Rafael Di Furia, back at it again on another Friday night for another episode of Not Your Average Globetrotter. And in this episode, I wanted to continue to discuss a subject that we haven't really gotten into in a while, and the subject of what does it mean to be Italian? What What is this definition? And recently, I happened to read an article that was, I don't know, it was something to do with Italian food or whatever it was. And then I went onto this website, just onto the main page where they have the rest of their articles listed. And I started to look at the articles that were there. Every, whoop. <laughs> Dropping the mic here. <laughs> anyway, on the website, Basically, there were only really three subjects, food, wine, whatever, you could bundle those two together, and travel. There was not really much else about Italy, what's going on in Italy, what things are really like here. And something that I really enjoy is the balance between the beautiful side of life in Italy and, and, and the reality. And sometimes the reality is wonderful and sometimes the uh, reality isn't all that amazing. Um, and I mean, this kind of gets into the joke that I've spoken about so many times, the pizza, the pasta, and the more. This, this joke almost on uh, la, la dolce vita, like this beautiful, amazing life, because the pizza, the pasta, and the amore are among the first things that really catch people's attention when they are thinking about Italy. I mean, Italy, realistically, if we're thinking about it, there is so much of the history and so much of the culture and so much of what Italy is today that you could really say has made an imprint on the world. And I was thinking, especially because Italy really is beyond the pizza, the pasta, and the amore, and that's why I, I always am talking about this term, is because there is so much more to this beautiful country. But what more is there? What else is there to talk about? What else is it that Italy has contributed to the world? And when we're talking about Italy, I think we also have to come up with a definition. There are various points in history that you could call something Italian or maybe something not Italian. And really, technically, before 1871 or even 1940 something or other, that definition of what <laughs> was Italy moved around a lot because even then it wasn't the Italy that we know today. It was only the kingdom of Italy being unified by 1871. So from 1871 until 1946, we had the kingdom of Italy. And that technically wasn't Italy as we know it today. Yes, the locations are the same. The names of the places haven't really changed at all. Uh, maybe you could say that there are some parts of the country that were added and some of the names there were modified or added. And that's a whole different discussion for another day. But generally speaking, what we think of Italy, for the most part, really only came into being in 1946. And even then, only in 1948 was it that Italy actually had its constitution that we have today. So realistically, Italy is a very young country. And before Italy, there were various warring states. And even before that, the Romans, the this, the who, the what, and the, all the different people. And so this comes back to a point that I've made so many times. What does it mean to be Italian? And what is Italian? And so what I wanted to try to figure out, what are some of the modern contributions that Italy has made to the world or Italy has made even just to itself that you, we can say is something that is purely Italian, something that was invented here, discovered here, whatever it was that is the, I, the original was from here. And after spending many more hours than I would like to admit on this subject, researching, trying to find out what this might actually be, I was actually a little bit surprised because a lot of what Italy has contributed throughout history, as far as maybe some of the biggest big breakthroughs, maybe even opening up a whole new study or coming up with a whole new invention, this is something that I was very surprised by. That while we do see a lot of brands and a lot of innovation in Italy, in modern day Italy, what we actually call Italy today, some of what we think of as Italian 
may not actually technically be Italian, even if it's a part of what we would think of and learn as Italian history. Even if we're talking about the espresso machine, the very first espresso machine, that is something that came from the Kingdom of Italy in 1884. So, yes, it is Italian, but not modern day Italy. Or even, for example, uh, the Venice Film Festival, which was founded in 1932, holds the title of the world's oldest running film festival, and possibly even the first film festival. But again, this is from the Kingdom of Italy. This is not Italy, Italy. It's Italy, but it's not Italy at the same time. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be some people who are very angry about what I have to say and by creating this definition. But even if we talk about something that is clearly an Italian staple, something that you probably find in just about every household here in Italy, a mocha pot, that is something that was invented in 1933 or maybe one of the biggest contributions to modern science, modern electricity, the modern world, the first nuclear reactor was built by an Italian in 1942, but it was built in America, in Chicago. So yes, this could have been an invention from somebody who was from the kingdom of Italy, but would we call this an Italian invention? Was this actually something that was created in Italy, or was this something that came from America? Was this something that was developed purely over there? I think this is something that is very much worth being proud of as an Italian, and especially for people from the Italian diaspora, to be proud of somebody who made a huge mark on the world in the Italian diaspora, living outside of Italy. And so, either way, regardless of how impressive that contribution was, it still falls short of 1946. And during this whole research, it really got me thinking, what is there more beyond this, this pizza, pasta, and amore? Because even like, if I get into conversations with Italians, I don't care if it's on Clubhouse or in real life or online somewhere else, other than Clubhouse on YouTube comments, on Facebook, whatever it is, somehow it always feels as though the conversation one way or another comes back to food of some sort, or travel, or tourism. Something about one of those quintessential Italian topics. But clearly, there is more to this nation. So what is it? What are these pieces of the puzzle? And this is something that I'm still looking for. And there definitely could be a few things that I may have missed. So of course, if I have missed anything, feel free to leave that down in the comment section below, but we still have a little bit to get through in the rest of this episode. And of course, just before we get too much deeper into this episode, a huge thank you to those of you who helped to make content like this possible through rafaeldifuria.com slash Patreon or patreon.com slash rafaeldifuria. And really, thank you so much to the monthly patrons who helped to make content like this possible through Patreon. It is so very greatly appreciated. But anyway, I think it's worthwhile to also mention some of the other big, uh, big contributions that Italians have made in history. And let's talk firstly about the radio developed by Marconi. He may not have necessarily discovered radio waves or the, some of the basic fundamentals, but he is credited with being the first maker of the radio, the first developer of this amazing piece of technology that has really made such a huge mark that we even still see today. I mean, wireless signals being sent all over this and that, wireless technologies and radio communications, uh, being able to use a walkie-talkie in wartime, or even radios being used on planes or uh, boats, whatever it might be, or even the things that you might have played with as a kid. I know I did. Or the entertainment platform that many of us grew up with on AM or FM radio, listening to talk radio or music. This is something that has been huge. And even some of the earliest television shows were based on old time radio shows. And am I mistaken here? Or were actually some of the original televisions, they were broadcasted to through 
radio waves. Anyway, I mean, th- th- this is something that has really made a mark. And even what we've seen on television has made a mark on the media that we consume online. And it all goes back to the radio and the advent of this this piece of equipment that has really changed a lot in our the past, what, 100 plus years since it was invented. I mean, even we can take it a step further to another technology that is built off of radio frequencies, and that's RFID. It could be something like maybe your credit card, or you have a fast pass for traveling uh, through toll roads or a bridge, whatever it could be, or even you have an ID badge that you have to tap when you go to work. There are a lot of really impressive technologies that are based on that radio technology. And then RFID. RFID, the way we know it today, not it's not something that was necessarily developed by an Italian, but the ancestor to what would be recognizable potentially as RFID these days was developed by an Italian. So it was that first invention that brought in a whole wave of of inventions and technologies from there. And then even another Italian taking that another step further. And this was already on top of another innovation from another country, kind of getting away from the pre-modern Italy era to get into some of the names and brands and innovations that we might very readily recognize today. uh, These would be things that maybe not necessarily are like inventions from the get-go. Like, for example, Fendi, Gucci, Prada, Dolce Gabbana, they didn't invent clothing, but they have definitely invented styles of clothing and have really innovated uh, design, pushing it forward throughout the decades. So that is something that you have to respect and really look, wow, that's something that Italy has made. And Italy has made a mark on the world of fashion. Not necessarily that it's been an invention from Italy, but it is definitely something that Italy has made its mark on the world with. And even talking about Lamborghini, Maserati, all of these Italian like supercar brands, or even if we're talking about Fiat, who owns, I forget which company, maybe Lamborghini, I don't remember. Anyway, I'm not a car guy. I'm sure it's very likely somebody on YouTube may already be typing a comment (laughs) saying, no, it was this company that's owned by that company. You got it wrong. But I, I, it really, I just am saying this to kind of try to articulate the point that while Italy may not have invented the car, it has definitely produced companies that have made innovations and have pushed the field ahead. Or even if we're talking about something like Nutella, there are a lot of people uh, who do think it's German. I actually was one of those people, and I know I've spoken to a lot of other people that thought Nutella was German. I don't know why this was. This was just an impression I was under. Maybe even when I was a little kid, I could have thought it was French. And then I think a German person told me it was German. And then I found out Ferrero is the maker of Nutella. But Nutella wasn't an invention of its own. This is something that was a a remake of sorts, you could say. And Nutella is based on something called Janduya. So it's not the original, but it's like the, the, the one that has become the, the household name of sorts. It's like how Coca-Cola is the biggest name in Cola. Nutella is probably the biggest name in Janduya. Or even Vespa. They may not have invented the motorcycle, but they sure have made a mark on the world as a motor scooter. But something where we could say maybe... It was a brand new invention, even though it was built on top of existing technologies, Arduino. Uh, For those of you who don't know, an Arduino is a a small circuit board, which is basically like a mini computer, which has allowed a whole generation of developers and tinkerers to create all kinds of absolutely amazing projects at a very low cost, comparatively speaking to how it maybe would have been 
prior. Uh, it's it's really opened up uh, a, a whole new world for so many people and, and to be used as an educational device or even to be something uh, that people take and they, they make costumes with it that have all kinds of animated lights or people who use it as an emulator for retro games and they make these big consoles out of it or maybe even people who use it as a media server for a, an entertainment center at home uh, or even there's all kinds of projects that people have done. Even uh, there's a project that people have done where they have made these Arduino boards into custom DIY home built digital cameras. The possibilities are almost endless when it comes to these these Arduino boards because it gives you so much access at a such a low cost that it really has allowed for a new type of innovation in an area that may not have had it before, even like I was saying before costumes and and having wings that fold up and fold down or lights whatever it may be it's 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 a really awesome project or even getting to one of my favorite things gelato it is something that the what we would think of it as gelato today would have maybe come around the the mid 1900s and what it's based on was much older than that so i'm still looking for what is it that this modern country has invented from the beginning because Italy overall has made so many amazing contributions to the world through arts, through history, through culture, so many different things. But there might be one invention that, okay, maybe Italy didn't invent the shoes, but there was a particular type of shoe that was invented here the five finger shoe and that might be the one thing that maybe some people in this say could be an embarrassment a national embarrassment <laughs> i mean the thing though is that there could even be people who say that they might not actually be italian because of where they come from and people from that part of the country may not actually consider themselves to be italian uh, it comes from an area called finchgau i can't remember off the top of my head if that's the german name or the ladin name but either way I think in Italian it's something like Valvenosta or something like this, but the proper name is Finchgau. <laughs> so maybe this might not be the proudest moment in Italian history or of design and, and fashion and so on, but it is definitely an invention of a new type of shoe. And credit needs to be given where credit is definitely due. I mean, look at somebody like Da Vinci, somebody who is absolutely ahead of his time. I mean, the, the work that he did at the time that he lived, the designs that he created, well, unbelievable. I mean, even by today's standards to an extent. I mean, it truly is amazing. I mean, even if we talk about Michelangelo or Galileo or even how ancient Roman law is still influencing modern law today in the West. I mean, even other parts of the world that base some of their laws on, on Western laws. It's, I mean... European laws, it's unbelievable. I mean, for example, another subject that I've spoken about at great length here on this YouTube channel, as well as on the Italian Citizenship Podcast, is Jure Sanguinis. This is a principle that comes from Rome, from ancient Rome, the Roman Empire, not modern day Rome, the city that happens to share the same name in the same location that was the heart of the Roman Empire. It, but there are various aspects of everyday life that have that influence there or even a bit more recently in 1776 methane was discovered on lake garda that was done here in italy <laughs> or even um lady liberty kind of taking it back to rome and the romans and liberty kind of as we think of it today and to an extent um or like even the statue of liberty in the united states and in france uh, Lady Liberty is based on a Roman goddess, Libertas, and this it's really amazing how this concept goes so far back into the ancient world that it is something that even until today is such an important principle and something that so many people hold so dearly. It is really amazing how long even just a concept has lasted that is from the ancient world. Or even bringing it back again to the modern world, serotonin was an accidental discovery uh, in 1937, if I'm not mistaken. The Italian guy who discovered it didn't call it serotonin. He had a different name for it, but it was later renamed by other scientists who discovered the same thing. But 
the first time it was discovered was here in Italy. And even though I've had a very difficult time to find something that I would say is a modern invention or modern discovery that comes from what we call Italy today, I think it's extremely important to remember what we consider as Italian or people who we think of as Italian, even if they technically weren't. And with all of the discoveries and innovations that we, that we attribute to Italians and Italy, and how many of them came before Italy was Italy today, is it that the innovation is done with? Or did maybe the Italians just get it right the first time? <laughs> and this leads me back to my original question, because so many of these things came from a time and place that wasn't considered to be Italy. What is the definition of Italian? Because these are definitely claimed as Italian by Italians and things that they are very proud of as a, t a part of Italian history. But when it comes to maybe certain people that left the country and their descendants, this becomes a different story. Of course, I'm not saying that it's right or it's wrong, but it just leads me back to that original question that I've had. And it leads me also back to the answer that I've given before. I don't think that Italian or being Italian is simply one thing or one way of being or even just one definition. I think it is something, I don't want to say it's a fluid definition, but the context matters very much. And even though there have been a lot of huge names and major accomplishments that have come from Italy, it kind of leads me in the direction of thinking, well, what's the situation? What's the deal? Is it that there's nothing that Italy's done with that, that part of history? Or are we living in an age where so much has been discovered and so much has been invented and so on that just anywhere in the world for anybody to stumble on something new? comes with maybe an, uh, more of a challenge than maybe it would have in the past. Maybe not. Maybe it's just always been uh, something where the world has had uh, these steps in between innovations, and that could definitely be part of it. Or I think there potentially could be another contributing factor, and that is another subject which I've definitely gone into here uh, in this project, in these episodes, and that is the drain on Italy. How many people have left the nation for many years. This is not something that's new just now that people are leaving the country. This is why the Italian diaspora is as large as it is. And countries like, what is it, um, Argentina, if I'm not mistaken, half of the population there today has the ability to somehow trace their lineage back to Italy. I mean, that's, that's, that's a pretty big number of people right there. That's very significant. So clearly, there has been a major brain drain on the country. Not to say that there aren't any left, because Italy has plenty to contribute to the rest of the world, and there are plenty of brilliant people in this country. But what happens in the modern age is that a lot of those people, especially when they're well-educated and have the possibility to get some, some great work elsewhere, it leads them to maybe going for an opportunity somewhere else where they can maybe earn a better living than they might be able to in Italy. Because let's be real, the Italian diaspora has produced a lot of amazing minds and uh, inventions and discoveries and so on. I mean, like we were talking about before, nuclear power. <laughs> I mean, this is huge. Absolutely huge. But then this leads me to... One final question, is the, the brain drain, the, the interest in leaving the nation, just possibly a symptom of something that may be a larger problem? And that's where I'm going to leave it off for today. But I will leave it off with one more uh, little thing that I did mention earlier. If I have missed any innovation, invention, discovery that has been made in the modern era that's not based on something else, something that's purely its own discovery, please be sure to let me know in the YouTube comments below the video. Or if you're listening to this as an audio only podcast, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram if you don't feel like coming over to YouTube. Uh, but really, uh, this is something that I 
won't say that this is the definitive answer. This is the definitive video on this. This is something that I am still wanting to learn about. And it's, it's a, I'm not gonna say an endless subject because there's definitely is an end to it. And that would be this moment, this moment, this moment. Really every moment up until the current moment is up for being analyzed, for figuring out, well, where is that? What is that innovation? What is that discovery that is purely Italian that was something that was done here? But of course, as always, I just want to say a huge thank you to those of you who help to make content like this on a regular basis through patreon.com slash Rafael Di Furia or Rafael Di Furia.com slash Patreon or Rafael Di Furia.com slash support for those one time donations. And also for those of you who've bought the shirts, onesies, mugs, and more, and posters and everything through Rafael Di Furia.com slash NYAG gear. Really, thank you all so much for helping to support this project and helping me to be able to continue with this project. Of course, as always, I'm Rafael Di Furia. Thank you again so much for joining me on another Friday night. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I look forward to seeing you all next time. Later. Mm -hmm.